Now, someone asked you a question that changed everything for you. So I wonder if you could take us back to that time and tell us what was going on for you and what happened. I decided to pack my things and come back home. In this specific moment, I understood the potential of AI. I'm speaking with AI every morning. Do you have any, any advice? I believe in big dreams, but I also believe in earning small wins. So I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about automation and how people can combine that with AI. Actually, there are three main tools that I'm using personally. The first one is... If just one question could immediately transform the quality of your life or the results of your business, would you want to know what that question was? Life and business strategist Kevin Bees interviews success masters to discover their life-changing questions. Welcome to the Life-Changing Questions Podcast. Oh boy, do we have an exciting episode for you today. Here we are, episode 243 of the Life Changing Questions podcast. Today I have Maxim Gomberg, and he's calling us all the way from Israel today, and he stands at the forefront of the AI revolution, bridging the gap between cutting-edge technology and practical business applications. As a visionary entrepreneur, university lecturer, and AI consultant, he's made it his mission to demystify AI and automation and make it accessible to all, regardless of their technical background. He's been trusted by uh, so many different organizations from agile tech startups all the way up to Fortune 500 companies. So we are so uh, very privileged and very lucky to have him on the show today. Uh, Maxim, welcome. Thank you very much. Pleasure to be here today. Thank you, Kevin, for the invitation. Hey, it's so great. I'm excited to, uh, to hear from you now. I'd like to take you back to a, th a few years ago. You found yourself in a challenging situation. Your motivation was low. Something wasn't really going right for you. Now, someone asked you a question that changed everything for you. So I wonder if you could take us back to that time and tell us what was going on for you and what happened. Yeah. Um, so approximately three years ago, um, I just came back to Israel from Dubai after uh, another project I created. Actually, I launched a crypto token. I had some uh, problems with my partners and I decided to pack my, <laughs> pack my uh, things and come back home. One day later, I woke up in the morning, I'm looking in the mirror, and I understand that <laughs> it's pretty hard to get out of the bed if you have no passion, if, no, if you have no purpose, or actually something to do. Lucky for me, uh, one of my best friends called me those days and told me, listen, I have a subscription for a tool called Playground. It's a new technology, something related with AI. What would happen if you'll explore this technology, you have lots of free time. I thought about it like one minute. Uh, of course, I didn't understand what it what is all about, but I had nothing better to do. So I told him, okay, thank you. Send it over to me and I will explore it. So the first days I saw like some kind of chatbot, <laughs> pretty, uh, pretty similar to human conversation. And I just started asking it different questions. During those days, I've decided uh, to launch a new project. I needed some uh, passion uh, for me to get out of the bed every morning. And I decided to tokenize real estate in uh, North Cyprus. And also I decided to take my new friend, uh, this playground, which later on we understood it's such a GPT models, etc. And I decided to take it with me during one month. I created business strategies, marketing strategies, presentations, materials in different languages. And actually during one month, I got into meeting with the advisor of the president of North Cyprus to introduce them with my new project, which I only thought about like one month ago. During the meeting, they asked me one crucial question. How many people do I have in my team? I'm not a liar, but it took me like one or two minutes to admit that I'm alone. And the reason is that I really felt that I have a whole team behind of me, okay? When I needed a CMO or a marketing expert, I had this playground, which is actually an AI tool to help me. When I needed a business strategist, I had AI to help me with business strategies. When I had to create a presentation, to craft content, to craft emails, Actually, every task that I had to establish this new project, I used AI. In a world where you don't know AI and you are not familiar with automation, when some, someone tells you he's creating a new project, new startup by his own, it's a little strange. So of course they look at me like I'm an alien, 
but it's okay. In this specific moment, I understood the potential of AI. How exactly can I, as an entrepreneur, implement this in my life and act as a corporation, like I have a whole team behind of me? So I came back home. I decided to not go forward with the tokenization project. And I started <laughs> in a most selfish way. I decided to explore AI tools to gain advantage on my competitors. As you understood, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a marketing expert. So I thought I would uh, gain this uh, advantage and will be able uh, to be better than everyone else. Another important thing that I noticed that I'm probably the only person that I know that understood the potential of this technology. So I started to explore it for my own purposes. But each time I was witnessing a new use case, new real value, new real business value use case, I posted about it on my Facebook, on my LinkedIn, etc. And people just <laughs> started to reach out and ask me, uh, do you provide workshops? Do you provide the uh, lectures, etc.? At the beginning, I didn't. But when I saw that there is demand, so I understood, okay, maybe I will, maybe it's worth a shot. Okay, so I just posted a post, guys who wants three hours workshops on AI and automation. I went to sleep. I woke up in the morning with 300 messages in my DM. And I understood for 100% there is a demand and I have something to offer with real value. Since then, I'm working, as you mentioned before, with the biggest companies, tech giants, companies like Checkpoint. I'm working with small and medium businesses as well to help them implement AI and automation. And I must say something. We all agree, especially the people that already tried using uh, different AI tools. AI is like really smart tool, okay? But most of the time it's passive and it's a big problem. And personally, I'm familiar with the automation world, like for at least a, a decade, but I always called it stupid automations. If you're familiar with this world, you know that you have to define exactly if something happens, like if the user writes the letter A, you will respond with B. If the uh, customer will respond with C, you will respond with D. But if something a little bit different, there is no ability to understand the context, to understand uh, mistakes. So we had some kind of problem, right? We couldn't use automations for any workflow and every real use case of uh, businesses. And I think I understood what, what is the next step of this uh, implementation, how businesses will gain real business value using AI tools and how to impl implement it. Of course, we can use like AI tools for the daily tasks, but the next step will be like actually automate workflows. We are able to automate 100% of the workflows today, thanks to the AI in the combination with the automations. So as I mentioned before, if AI is smart, but passive, automations are, let's say some kind of active, but stupid. They are actually solving the problems of each other. And together we can create solutions that we are not able to do. And most of the time, actually, we will be able to create solutions that two, three years ago were imaginary or required big amounts of money and team of developers, etc. And today each one of us can implement it using zero code knowledge. And I think this is the most important thing here. Everyone can do it small businesses, medium businesses, and big corporations as well. There is no difference in the ability to actually implement it. Very cool. So this was a very transformational question for you then. So uh, stuck, being able to, unable to get out of bed, and your buddy said to you, hey, what would happen if you explore this new technology? And it's taken you on a bit of a journey to be able to uh, get to meet the president of the, you know, the North Cyprus as a result of that very quickly. And I love the way you describe it as like having a whole team behind you, I guess, without having to pay the expensive fees of a team, without having to worry about people phoning in sick, you know, doing a terrible job. Now, what I like about what you said here is the combination of AI and automation. So two, two very different things there, but you're combining them together, which is where you're really getting the competitive advantage. Now, I know many uh, people listening would have 
dabbled with some AI, whether it's a bit of chat GPT or whether they've done, you know, a bit of uh, image stuff with uh, mid journey or something like that, or maybe they've even used some other specific tools. Like you know, we have tools in this meeting, you know, transcribing things for us, et cetera. But I don't know if everyone is quite so familiar with automation. So I wonder if you could tell us a little bit more about automation and, and how people can combine that with AI. So first of all, automations uh, enables us uh, to take like full workflows in our business and to automate them. Okay. For example, I'm creating content every day, right? Most of us creating content every day. Today, we can create a workflow 100% automated using automation tools and AI tools. For example, personally me, I have an automation that knows to read news, okay? Automatically every day by its own to send the news to ChatGPT to the brain of the ChatGPT that writes and crafts the post for me. Then the ChatGPT sends the, the post content to Dali that generates an image for that. And they are connected to my Facebook page and uploading the content without me being part in any uh, scenario uh, in this automation. So when I set it up one time, I just press play and that's it. It works for me. I can streamline processes of sales um, using email. I can uh, create automated replies to my customers, but not like automated replies as you know from old school automations with template messages, like personalized messages to my customers with understanding of the context. So I can provide much better service to my clients. I have an automation that answers uh, to comments on my Instagram. I actually like literally created a digital version of myself to do it. And if you will think about it, okay, you can wake up every morning and ask the chat GPT to craft a post, but why, why do we have to do it every day? So once I establish this automation, it knows automatically every morning to craft a post. I don't have to remind it every day and prompt it every morning again and again. And this is where you see the, the real value. Real value. Uh, I mean, how cool is that? So I'm happy I was just talking to you before about how uh, with this episode, we can take the transcription, which gets done by AI, put it into chat GPT, where it makes up amazing show notes. Which used to, I used to have to pay someone, you know, two hours of work to listen to the show, do the job. Sometimes they do a terrible job. Whereas now you could, drop it straight in here and out comes these amazing show notes and, and awesome. But what you're saying is I shouldn't really, even at the end of this copy paste, you know, uh, and do that, I should have an automation running. So as soon as this uh, thing drops down into a file or a folder, it triggers it off. And then while other thing is done, it's already uploaded to my website, you know, to the podcast platform, etc. Exactly. By the way, we, we can mention the tools that we have here on our uh, call today. Um, as you mentioned, we have AI tools that subscribe, uh, transcribe and summarizing our meetings. Uh, we have two different tools here. By the way, we we have a gift for you. If you will listen until the end of this episode, uh, you will receive a guide how to create your own AI assistant for meetings. And the idea is that those assistants can, as we mentioned, transcribe the meeting and summarize it. But imagine taking it further and connect it to my email and to send an email with the summary of our meeting 100% automatically, okay? Without the need to copy, paste, and send it manually. So another use case that we can use, and it's limitless, I must say. Sometimes clients <laughs> came to me with crazy ideas that I didn't thought about at all, and we made it happen, okay? Because each person knows exactly uh, what he does on a daily basis. He knows their workflows. So the clients bring the problem and we bring the solution. I love that very clear. So in terms of that, if you're looking for transcription tools, then et cetera. So I have fireflies in here and that does a transcription. It does a summary of the episode. You can click on certain parts of the transcription and it links directly to the audio. You can pay extra and have the video associated as well. Yours uh, that you bought in Max, maybe you can tell us the name of it because it goes a little bit further because uh, by the sounds of it, we can ask it questions afterwards, like verbally, and it will tell us, uh, you know, the answer to the question. Yeah. So this tool uh, called TimeOS, and personally, I really love it because of this specific uh, feature. Okay. 
it's not only transcribing everything and summarizing, but also we can actually speak with it like a chatbot and ask specific questions about our meeting. For example, if you promise something to me and two months later, I don't remember what exactly did you promise, I can go to the chat and ask about this specific mention. Please tell me what Kevin promised me during this meeting. And we will extract it from the, from the transcription. Easy as that, simple as that. And I must say, the, uh, the big advantage here for me is that I don't have to be worried about forgetting things from my uh, meetings. It's always there. I always can ask questions. I always can go back and it just freeing my mindset. I love it. It's so clear. Hey, do you think um, you could probably also ask it, please summarize the actions of the meeting or summarize all the actions I still have outstanding. That would be, be quite helpful. Like uh, action items, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, 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 of course. Actually, it's built in. So uh, it's built in. Every meeting that I have, uh, at the minute the meeting is finished, completed, after like two, three minutes, I receive summary, including action points, uh, action items, including sentiment analysis. I actually ask it specifically to, to describe sentiment analysis, meeting productivity. Uh, I always receive a score between zero to 10. Most of my meetings scored uh, eight plus. So <laughs> it means it. most of the meetings okay. are productive. And by the way, I must to say another thing. Uh, I used it lately when one of my employees had to uh, jump on a Zoom meeting with a client and I couldn't uh, join them. So I sent my AI. And at the, mid at the end of the meeting, I were able to ask questions this specific AI and to know everything about the meeting that happened, what exactly my employee told him, the client, and what the client told the employee, I think it's a very powerful tool for uh, managers as well. Love it. Sounds like a super powerful tool. And uh, by the sounds of it, you're going to give us access to it at the end of the call, which sounds amazing. I'm looking forward to trying it because it's got some additional features beyond what I'm getting with Firefly. So I look forward to jumping into that. Let's understand a little bit more about the automate automation then, because I think we've had a lot of conversation about AI and what it can do. I think people understand that, but I don't know that everyone's really tapping into this automation. Are there certain tools that we can use or systems that we should be using to do automations? Yeah, actually, there are three main tools that I'm using personally, and I recommend each one of you to use them. Uh, the first one is ManyChat. ManyChat is automation tool specifically for social media. Uh, most of the time, I'm using it for simple automations. For example, if you are familiar with the post or reels that saying like, comment uh, Maxim, and I will send you via the uh, via DM the instructions or link, etc. I'm using this automation all the time. It increases the interaction on my posts. It helps me uh, to sell more without me chasing comments <laughs> on my feed. Okay. Very simple to use it. They also have like ready to use template for this specific uh, automation. So, so you don't have to like come with uh, some uh, background uh, in technology. Very simple to use. This is one solution. Two other tools that I personally use called Make.com and Zapier. Actually, uh, they are competitors of each other. Personally, I use Make much more. It's cheaper to use. It's much more easier. I prefer their uh, interface, actually. The way they are putting out the automation process visually uh, is amazing. And those tools enables us to create automations with different workflows, with thousands of applications built in, in those platforms. So I can connect with my Gmail, with my social media platforms, with my drive, with CRM platforms, thousands of applications built in. So it makes everything so easy to connect and to integrate with. For example, if I want to integrate with my Gmail, I'm just looking for a Gmail in Make or Zapier, I press it, two clicks, I give it uh, authentication, and that's it. I'm connected with my Gmail or my Drive or my social media. Super easy to use, and you can find templates there as well. So you will be able to use it. I must say, it's a little, little more complicated than just using AI tools, because using most of the AI tools, you're just speaking like natural language. Here you have to, to define the exact workflow that you want to create. You have to think how the process will work like step by step 
it's a little more challenging, but think about it like this. Three years ago, you had to be a, a developer or a code expert to do such things. And today, you just have to use imagination and to try. That's it. And to try. I, I think that's it, to try. Yeah, if you don't try, you're definitely not going to get the outcome. That's that's for sure. So uh, maybe maybe people are listening and they are sold on the idea of having things automated. They would love that they don't have to take any time, any effort, and the AI is doing the work for them and things just pop out magically. That would be, uh, be, be very useful. But maybe this isn't something that they put their time and energy into, you know, doing the automation. So do you have any, uh, any advice for people like that? Like, is there, is there something, can they get help from that? Is that something you do? Is that something that they can get help from other people with? First of all, I would say when it starts to implement AI and automation, it has to start small. What do I mean? I believe in big dreams, but I also believe in earning small wins, starting with small wins. There are like hundreds of thousands of tools out there. Okay, it's overwhelming. You have to find two, three main tools that you will use regularly. Okay, that will figure out at least, I don't know, 80% of uh, the task that you want. Don't chase after FOMO and look for uh, new tools every day because you will get confused. You will waste lots of time and money. So try to focus on two, three main uh, tools. Regarding the automation, it depends how technical sense you have, okay? Uh, I saw people that managed to create the first automations by their own. Most of the people have to learn somewhere. You can uh, search for, uh, I don't know, webinars on the internet, maybe YouTube tutorials, or you can join workshops or courses from people like me, for example. It's something that I'm providing as well. I must say, the people that I work with, uh, with my experience, as I see it, it's split into two. People that want to do it by themselves and they are able to, to learn and to execute. And the second part is people that understand the potential, but they are afraid it will take too much time from them. And then they just looking for, uh, you know, someone to do it for them. But most of people, before they met me, or went through my uh, workshops, they didn't know what they don't know, okay? So the idea is that the workshop is helping people to implement the basics of automations, but most crucial and important part is the mindset switch, to look at your business in a way that you are looking for repetitive tasks. You are looking at the workflows and actually defining them step by step. And then you can take someone uh, to implement it. But this specific mindset switch, I think it's the most important thing because you will understand how you can approach this, at least. Because it's how to do it without understanding automations and AI. How can I implement it? Sometimes I, I will have no idea if I don't understand the technology and the capabilities. And I want to add another important thing for businesses. Sometimes there is no need to implement AI and automation. Okay. Like I understand the reason hype. There are workflows that will benefit from implementation, but there are workflows that doesn't need to be changed at all. And it's okay. Because sometimes I see business owners that want to implement AI, like in every cost, everywhere I want AI. But I'm saying, okay, you don't have to use it everywhere. Sometimes I can look at the workflow and tell you, you know what? It's good as it is. Keep it that way. Let's use AI in different workflows that we see that you can gain some extra value, real business value. So that's another tip for businesses. Do not rush. <laughs> very, very important point. So pick uh, one or two or maybe two or three main tools and focus on using them, maximizing uh, them to the best of their ability rather than trying to go out there and learn the 100,000, 200,000 tools, however many, uh, however many they are, is growing exponentially by the day. And the uh, two important questions that I heard you asking there then is even if you're not doing automation or AI right now, ask yourself, what do I do repetitively? And how can I define them step by step? Because if you can map that out, then it's very possible if you go to YouTube tutorials, uh, join a workshop with Max or ask someone like Max directly how to actually automate that. If you've already got that laid out, then it's going to be pretty straightforward for them to help show you or for you to help implement it yourself. 
And those tools then were uh, Zapier, make.com and manage it wherever you're listening check in the show notes we'll uh, make a clickable link to those and uh, and additionally to the uh the awesome transcription tools that we have listening in as well now max i'd love to know from you are there any final uh tools or tips or techniques that uh you know we should be considering today i want to say something regarding the let's say the adoption process okay i see again two kinds of people people that only listen and there is a problem there because if you will listen for me to me or other experts you won't gain anything you must practice so i want you to challenge yourself just start speaking with ai tools on a daily basis on every subject okay personally me is part of my habits i'm speaking with the ai every morning I'm sending a screenshot of my calendar and I'm just starting to speak with it. What do you think about uh, uh, the, the tasks that I have today? Do you have any important notes, uh, suggestions, how I can make my day better? Even if it's not like a specific business oriented questions, just practice the communication, okay? So you will feel like uh, free speaking with AI. It should be like your personal uh, angel. You know those uh, <laughs> cartoons when you have the good angel and the bad angel? Imagine you have only the good one. You can speak with it all day long. Use it. Speak with it. You literally have like small uh, Albert Einstein in your pockets. Why don't you use it? I love <laughs> it. I love it. A small Albert Einstein is in your pockets. Uh, yeah, why? why don't you use it? And I, I really love your example there. We don't have to uh, even start with anything complex. We can actually... Uh, start asking, hey, you know, some of the fun things I've done uh, with AI in the early days, I took a picture of like the written shopping list and I asked it to uh, structure it for me in the order in which I'm going to walk around the supermarket. And sure enough, it, it worked out, uh, you know, what the order was. And it was great. It put the fruit and veg at the top of the list, you know, then it put like the, um, you know, the dairy stuff next and it put like the, you know, the, the tins and then the frozen stuff because it kind of knew the layout of the supermarket and it made it easier. Otherwise, I'm going in the supermarket trying to work it out. And so, the cool thing about that is I actually understood my terrible handwriting, you know, my wife's writing. So simple things, um, you know, and actually that's not going to uh, lead to a massive breakthrough in your business. But I think once you start playing with these things and realizing the possibility, because then I started doing the same thing with taking pictures of um, I guess some dummy financial data. And I, I started asking it some, some questions about it. And, you know, it's amazing. The, um, the insights it gave, it was able to read that data, understand that data, make recommendations on what you should do next with your business. Um, hey, quick question for you on that. Uh, should we be cautious with what we're putting into these tools? Like I just talked about financial data there. You know, maybe I've got confidential in, you know, information, you know, employee CVs, et cetera. If we feed that into the model, are there any risks or challenges with that? Well, amazing question. Um, there is a challenge. By default, all of our data is kept in, let's say, open AI cloud, for example. Okay, I will speak about ChatGPT as an example. ChatGPT, AI tool created, AI large language model created by OpenAI. By default, our data, actually all of our chats are stored in their cloud. The purpose of that storage is to train the model, okay? So by default, all of our data is there. There is a risk. Maybe you are working with clients that you can't uh, reveal their data to third party, etc. Maybe you are uh, about to share sensitive information, patterns, etc. I want you to know, you can disable it, okay? If you will go to the settings into the ChatGPT, you will find a section of, uh, I think it's data privacy, and you will see um, a tab called improve model for everyone. If I will put it in another way, it's like we are taking all your data, okay? <laughs> That's the real way to describe it. Of course, they have a copywriter uh, that uh, crafted it a little bit differently. Improved model for everyone. You can go there and disable the training process based on your data. That's one. Two, specifically in OpenAI, in ChatGPT, they have new subscription called Enterprise Plan, which created specifically for businesses because they understood, OpenAI understood that one of the most, one of the biggest problems uh, implementing their tool is the data privacy. 
So if you will subscribe to the enterprise plan, which costs, I think, five bucks more, uh, by default, your data is safe. Now the question, if Maxim Gomberg, <laughs> as a personnel, can check this out and to say like 100% our data is safe, I'm not able to do it. But Microsoft has 49% of shares of OpenAI. I'm already using Microsoft tools, so I believe if they wanted to steal my data, they are already been able to do that. So pretty much, I must say, I'm confident in those tools that just make sure you disable the training or subscribe to the enterprise plan. Regarding other tools, it depends. We have to read it. Uh, for example, in Cloud, I didn't saw an option to disable the training mode. But specifically regarding ChatGPT, yes, there is a way to, to work with that even with like personal sensitive information. According to uh, the instructions I just gave you, you will be fine. I love it. Very clear. And uh, there's a very good copywriting lesson uh, hidden in amongst that as well. <laughs> we are taking all of your data as describers, improve the model for everyone. <laughs> what a great reframe uh, that is. And so, so yes, there may be some risks around this, but there are some things you can do to protect yourself. So clearly don't put anything in there that you would be concerned is too sensitive. You know, if someone else saw it and you wouldn't be happy with it, but you can join the enterprise plan or untick that box, uh, you know, improved model for everyone, particularly in chat GPT. Max, this has been a super fun episode. I've really uh, got a lot of value and insight from it. I know we could keep talking for hours because you're an expert on this topic. I I'm, I'm certainly keen to join you for what else you have. Where do I find out more about you? How do I join maybe some of these workshops you're talking about? Yeah. Okay, so first of all, you can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Maxim Gomberg. Uh, we promised a gift to our audience. Uh, so guys, if you will comment on any of my posts on LinkedIn, uh, the name Kevin, I will share with you a guide how to set up your own AI assistant for meetings that will transcribe, summarize, and do everything for you. Soon, I will uh, publish an upcoming free webinar, AI webinar, that will help you understand in which ways you can adapt this technology already. So everything will be published on my page, and I'm looking forward to see your comments and share with you the full guide of establishing the AI assistant for yourself. Love it. So, so good. So powerful. Ever you are listening, check out the show notes. There's a clickable link there to ms-marketing.co.il, which is uh, Max's website. And of course, you can comment on his social media too, which we'll also put the links uh, in the show notes there. And just I want to check in on this. If uh, you go and comment with the word Kevin, you're going to get the information. Now, Max, I want to check with you. If someone writes Kevin, is it going to be a, a bot that automatically responds with all the information they need? It will be me. I promise. It will be you in person. <laughs> um, yeah, by the way, you can tag Kevin as well. So he will see your comments. <laughs> there you go. That'll be fun. I really appreciate that. Uh, Max, it's been absolutely uh, a pleasure to connect with you. Do you have any final messages you'd like to share today? Stay positive. Don't afraid of the technology. Use it to be better. It's not here to replace you. It's here to be another tool that you can use in your everyday life. Uh, we are all pretty busy with everything we are doing. Imagine you can have more free time for the most important things and to delegate the tasks that you don't want to do to AI and automations. And I see you on LinkedIn. Thank you very much, Kevin, for inviting me here. It was a pleasure and I hope to see you soon again. It's an absolute pleasure. And wherever you're listening, make sure you're asking this truly life-changing question. What would happen if you explore this new AI technology. Thank you so much, and we'll catch you in the next episode. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening to the Life-Changing Questions podcast with your host, Kevin Bees. We'll catch you next time.